In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We are in Friday, and this is the third, the third episode of Gifts of the Spirit. Yesterday we were dealing with the faith, and we said that men of faith, men and women of faith, are men and women of courage. Men and women of faith are men and women of conviction. And they are able to stand, teach their faith, and defend that which they believe in. Today, we start with giving. Those who have this gift are particularly willing and able to share what resources they have with the pleasure and without the need for them to see the returns and without the need for them to see what has happened. Now I need to answer a question that I have always had when I am teaching giving in various churches and especially tithing because it could be one aspect of our giving that is highly misunderstood. Maybe today we need to understand something that maybe we didn't know. Why, if you ever find yourself struggling to give, there can only be two reasons why that is happening. Number one, you could be biblically illiterate. And number two, the gift of giving may not be in you. Because believers who have this gift of giving, they will never be pushed for them to give the offerings. Men and women with this gift, they will never be coerced or pushed or given address seminars for them to tithe because they have a relationship. Men and women who have a relationship with God have no problem giving. Because again, this gift is given to them. And I love that. Now you know. If your church is struggling with sadaka, tithing, you could trace it to this gift. And number two, biblical illiteracy. There could be others which I explain on another episode. If your church is struggling with tithing, the 10%, you find the reason in this. If as an individual, you have never found the reason for giving, it could be that this gift is far from you. Maybe somebody needs to ask me, but Father, if I am struggling, can I pray for this gift? Specifically, you pray for the gift and God will give you. And tell him, my father, I want to support my church. But I can feel that this gift is not in me. Please give me this gift. And God will give you the gift. Did you know? There are so many men and women endowed financially. Yet they don't give for the support of the gospel. Why? Because they think it is normal. Whatever they are doing, they are called to preach. Dear good people, gospel is expensive. That is why we plead with you to support the work of evangelization. However, if you struggle to give, chances are you may not be having this gift. And today as your priest and servant, I want to encourage you, kindly pray for this gift so that you can be able to support your church, so that you can support the work of evangelization. And when you see people not giving, before you pass any judgment, you may need to pray for them. The other one is healing. A capability used by God to restore others. Be it physically, emotionally, mentally, 
or spiritually. A capability used by God for restoration. Who does that? We are the people who will do that work of God, of bringing about spiritual restoration, bringing about emotional uh, restoration, bringing about spiritual restoration, bringing about mental restoration, the gift of healing. The gift of helping. Aha. Is it associated with giving? Let us first listen to this. Someone with this gift is able to support or assist members of the church so that they may be free to minister to others. Did you hear that? It's like a trainer of trainers. Uh -huh. Somebody who is a helper. Could be guiding others. Enlightening others so that they can be of use to the church of God. Thank you. Hospitality. It is a natural ability to make people, even strangers, feel welcome in one's own home or church as means to disciple or to serve them. We are called as believers to be hospitable. Hospitable. To make people feel appreciated, loved, welcome, and warm. Wherever we go, we feel that we are at home. There is something I keep on telling people. That uh, I have one personal motto. Wherever I go... And this comes from my heart. These are the things I speak with a lot of passion. That wherever I go, I make it my home and my small heaven. I remember I was once given a responsibility. And somebody asked me, and I thought the question was not very genuine. Hey, Father, now, are you going to fit there? <laughs> And I, I loved just as I have loved. <laughs> and I told the person, there is one thing you don't know about Father CK. For me, wherever I go, I make it my home and my small heaven. That is why I am perpetually happy. I cannot be misplaced. For me, if you try to misplace me, you get yourself frustrated. Because myself, I am such a fellow who is always at home even in the zoo. <laughs> I'll make it to my home and my small heaven. And this is what I keep telling my, my fellow religious men and women. One way of making sure that you are perpetually happy, don't have a destination in mind or a certain ministry in mind or a certain destination in mind or a certain parish in mind or a certain country in mind, such that if you're not given that responsibility, you are perpetually depressed and frustrated. No. If you want to be happy, just tell, tell God that I am ready. Whatever you said to me, through my superiors, I will be at home and I will be happy. When I was ordained a priest, uh, the priest who mentored me Reverend Father Dr. Dr. Boniface Murage, who took me through the rigors of celebrating Mass, word for word, the, the techniques used, the performative language, how to put your hands, other things. There's one thing that priest shared with me, and he told me two things. He told me one, Father, when you are transferred, if the bishop uh, asks you when you are reporting in case you are asked tell the bishop that I am reporting today arrive there first before anything else number two when you arrive there 
don't unpack the bishop can change his mind if he changes his mind happily go to the next destination and i can tell you for a fact i have carried that religiously up to date maybe that is where i picked my motto wherever i go i make it my home and my small heaven i want to sell the same to you wherever you go make it your home in your small heaven the family that god has given you make it your home in your small heaven in your marriage make it your home in your small heaven if we can all have that discipline mama mia we will never ever never ever walk around with the drooping spirits because i am not where i expected mhm I stop at that. I know I'll pick it up again tomorrow. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, do have a productive Friday.